Hey guys, uh, thanks for joining us. Again, thanks for everybody last week. We've got had a, a couple of viewers last week that ended up producing uh, the shrimps cassia as well. So thank you very much for sending me pictures and I hope you enjoyed the recipe. So today we've had a number of uh, members at the club and as well uh, people that uh, know the veal meatball recipe that have requested for this recipe. So we're gonna end up producing veal meatballs today, okay? Uh, before I do that, I want to introduce my young sous chef today, so you can come around. Uh, so this is my son Billy, <laughs> and Billy uh, and I are going to be producing the recipes together. There's a number of different elements to this dish. Please feel free to ask questions. Uh, they'll be able to tell me when when the questions are being asked, and I can answer them to the best of my ability. Hi Sam, how are you? Good to see you, bud. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so I've had a couple of people ask me about my uh, my love for Italian food. Obviously, is is I, I completely adore Italian food, and how my interest and my uh, recipe knowledge of Italian cuisine how it began. So I'll I'll make this very short, long and boring story. So I'll make it short. But when I was 19 or 20, that was my first uh, chef job. It was at a very small uh, Italian restaurant called Via Fettuccini and it was on the Queen's Bay. I don't know if anybody remembers it from the Etobicoke area and I was 19 years old and I was asked to head up the chef position there. So my background originally as a chef was trained by an Indonesian chef as well as uh, what I had learned in college and obviously I'm not Italian. Uh, from the side of his sleeve I'm Canadian and uh, East Coast background, proud to be a New Flander. And our knowledge of, of Italian cuisine is obviously uh, just what we learn at home. So when I started to work at Queen's Pasta, my sous chef, and tell me if this is an Italian name, his name was Giovanni Magliano. Uh, my sous chef was 45 years old and he saw the way I was producing food. And knowing that it wasn't the way he had been brought up with strictly Italian food, he started showing me uh, the way they did it at home. And I've kept all those recipes. Unfortunately, Giovanni's uh, not around anymore, but uh, I kept all those recipes dear to my heart and I still use them today, okay? So a lot of my basic knowledge is, is from Giovanni, okay? Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about a program that uh, is implementing in Milton. We're in Milton, Ontario. And I talk a lot about the smaller companies that I've used uh, in the industry and some of them that are doing store-to-door -door delivery now. So Ultra Foods is an amazing store here in Milton. They've been around for a long time. I've used them for years and they're doing store-to-door -door as well. A lot of really unbelievable savings from a wholesale uh, variety, but you can they are starting to deliver to Toronto next week. So go online, check them out. The wholesale pricing is phenomenal. So if it's something that you'd like to deliver to your door, uh, please feel free and contact them. Uh, Ultra Foods, I believe it's www.ultrafoods.ca. So there's my promoting uh, local company and very good company, family owned, fantastic. <clears throat> so again, what we're going to be uh, discussing today is we're gonna be making veal meatballs. Uh, a lot of people will ask why veal versus beef. Uh, again, a lot of these recipes that we talk about, feel free to substitute proteins that you enjoy more. So if you're not a veal lover for whatever reason, uh, beef is perfectly fine. Uh, if you want to combine veal and pork, if you can eat pork and you enjoy the taste of pork, please feel free to add pork to the recipe as well. But I would stay true to the numbers. So if it's a five pound recipe and you want to uh, indulge and put a little bit of half pork, half veal, please feel free. Uh, as well as if you wanted to use all beef, but just stay true to the volumes, okay? Uh, veal for me is a, uh, veal traditionally is fattier. Uh, it is a very clean protein, uh, is very tender uh, because it's a very young animal obviously. And uh, I just really enjoy the flavor. So it really takes on, has a good amount of fat, takes on a lot of the, the flavor profile that we're gonna add to it today. Uh, so today we've chose, uh, the veal we've chosen is uh, a leaner veal. So it's an 85-15. Uh, veal choice, okay, and, and uh, unbelievable flavor, okay. So what we're going to start at first, I brought a lot of the ingredients over, 
And I'm going to have Billy, Billy do the, the dog work, okay? So he's going to do all the really hard work, and I'm going to do the easy work and take the glory. Okay, is that are you cool with that? Yeah. <laughs> he's used to this. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the ingredients over to the oven, and then when I'm going to come back, I'm going to have Billy produce the veal meatballs, okay? If you have any questions, guys, please feel free to ask. So what I'm going to leave here for Billy is I'm going to leave the uh, parsley, uh, the eggs. All I'm going to take over to the oven is the olive oil, the onions, the fresh thyme, and uh, the garlic. And that's all I'm going to need at the oven right now, okay? So I'm just going to get my wonderful cam cameraman, which is May today. She's going to follow me over to the oven and we'll start there. Okay, guys? So we have everything preset. I'm going to turn the fan down a little bit so hopefully you can hear me better. Let's see if that works. And we're just going to get started here, okay? So it seems like a lot of you guys have the recipe that was available and set up online. Uh, the YouTube channel as well has a number of base recipes. So we've produced our tomato sauce in advance. And you'll understand why when we get to that point. But uh, on the, the YouTube channel, there's a known as tomato sauce recipe. Very basic tomato sauce, just utilizing uh, fresh basil, some onions, some garlic, uh, bay leaf, tomato, and stock I used for this particular one. And then again, if you uh, look on the YouTube channel, it's there for you, okay? So what we're gonna start here is we're gonna go low to medium heat. And we're just gonna add some olive oil in the pan. Again, quite a bit of olive oil, but that's gonna be incorporated into the the recipe itself, okay? I'm gonna allow that to come to temp, and with the, the onions, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna saute those and, until they're translucent. I am not going to add any color, okay? Salt, please. We talk a little bit about layering flavor, uh, and we talked about it in our recipes when we were doing crab cakes and those types of things. So what we're gonna do is make sure that the whole time we're flavoring every ingredient that we're putting in, okay? So uh, we're gonna be sauteing the onions and the garlic fresh thyme. I'm gonna season this, allow it to cool, and then while it's cooling, we're gonna go back and produce the crab cakes. Uh, a little showstopper at the end, what we're gonna do is, uh, even though it wasn't on the original recipe, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make puttanesca sauce, which has an unbelievable history in Italian cuisine, actually. Uh, so let's just say, to be politically correct, it was named after ladies of the night. Uh, the Italian dishes date back 1700s, I mean quite a long time. This one, about 60 to 70 years ago, apparently is when the recipe was produced. And it's incorporating some pretty robust flavors. So uh, think about garlic, capers, olives, uh, good San Marzano tomatoes we're going to use, and a little bit of anchovy, olive oil, salt and pepper. And I incorporate a little bit of brandy into it as well. And I think uh, with the brandy, it really adds another element, okay? So with the onion, I'm just gonna add that in now. And again, you can start to hear the sizzle in the pan. I don't wanna develop any color at this point. I'm really just cooking the onions until they're translucent. And I'm gonna add the onions first. The reason I'm not adding the garlic at the same time is again, I don't wanna develop any, any uh, color to any of the onion or the garlic, and the garlic will tend to burn. Uh, some Italian cuisine we talked about before tends to want that garlic to be a little bit golden and add a little bit more of a robust flavor, but for this particular dish, I do not, okay? Sam is very excited about your puttanesca. Do you like puttanesca sauce, Sam? He says, woohoo, hoo puttanesca. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do two plate variations on the end. We're gonna do the spaghetti aglio, which is just a garlic and olive oil sauce, and then, so we're gonna plate that dish, and then I'm gonna plate the, meat, the uh, veal meatballs as an appetizer and do it with the puttanesca sauce. So a little bit more of a restaurant presentation, uh, but either can be done very simply at home, okay? So again, just cooking the onions until they're translucent, developing a little bit of flavor. I used a really good quality olive oil, and because of this dish, I'm using an Italian olive oil. Uh, it has a little bit of peppery note. Uh, it's not very floral. Uh, but great peppery notes. Looks like I have a little bit of an onion peel I'm just going to eliminate. Okay. 
So now the onions have become a little bit translucent, so I know that I'm developing flavor there. Now I'm gonna add my garlic all at once, and I'm gonna add my thyme leaves. So the thyme leaves, we've just stemmed, uh, eliminated the stem and chopped them fine, okay? Garlic we talk about, obviously fresh is better. So yes, if you need to, you can go out and purchase the pre-chopped garlic, which is fine as well. But uh, if you want really intense flavor, always fresh. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna continue cooking that. I'm gonna turn down the heat just a little bit. Continue cooking it just so that I can develop the flavor of the garlic, soften the onions a little bit, and then just allow it to cool and we're gonna be adding it to our veal meatballs. I'm gonna let Billy do the veal meatballs all by himself because what you don't know is Billy and I produced a batch of meatballs uh, this afternoon. Uh, so you probably saw him on the Instagram channel. Uh, he produced the meatballs just so that we could make this very fast and within the hour for sure, okay? So I believe we're there. Uh, like I said, the garlic has definitely become more aromatic and developed some flavor. The onions are quite soft. The thyme has is, is also incorporated some great flavor here. So all I'm gonna do at this point, and this is where everybody laughs, I always say a little bit of salt. I'm gonna put a good amount of kosher salt. So let's say season liberally with kosher salt. So I really wanna make sure that it has some great flavor. And I'm gonna add some cracked black pepper, okay? Sam, any questions? Can you tell us a little bit about puttanesca sauce? I believe Sam has an Italian food background as well. Great history, Sam works with me at the Boulevard Club. Fantastic chef uh, with a lot of great history and knowledge as well. We've gotta get cash on here to make his butter chicken. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn the heat off completely, allow that to sit, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna deal with it when we're doing our veal meatballs, okay? So you can follow me back to Billy now. So what we're gonna do on Billy's side here is we're gonna to start to organize our ingredients. So Billy, if you wanna take the scale here. Oh yeah. Okay. And we're gonna get the bowls organized for the veal meatballs, okay? So first thing Billy's gonna do, your recipe's right here, son. Yeah. So what he's going to do is he's going to start incorporating into a bowl. He's going to start incorporating all of his uh, wet and dry ingredients. And I'll tell you a little bit about why he's doing that. So you can move over this way just so that they can see you. And I'll get the veal organized as well. So there's, there's something called a panad or panada in, in uh, culinary terms. And we use it a lot when we're doing, uh, say, pâtés, terrines. And essentially what we're doing is we're duplicating that here, okay? So Billy is going to pour all his breadcrumbs, his cheese, uh, all his uh, dry uh, garlic, so his garlic powder, his eggs, his milk, and he's gonna allow the liquid to absorb into the breadcrumb a little bit, okay? I like panko breadcrumbs. It can be regular uh, breadcrumbs. It can be seasoned Italian breadcrumbs. Whatever you have at home is fine. You can even do it with fresh bread. is fine as well. Using fresh bread will do the same thing. The, the only reason we're adding all this breadcrumb, it's not filler. So we hear a lot about filler in the industry that uh, somebody's producing meatballs and they're adding all this breadcrumb and the reason they do it is it reduces the cost. And we're not doing it for that reason. We're adding the breadcrumb so the end result is very tender. And, and uh, when we're eating the meatball uh, out of the oven, it's not a solid mass of protein. It's very, very tender. And you can eat it uh, right out of the, the uh, the pan or even cold it would be very flavorful and very tender okay so sam said that the ladies of the night would use the dish for the aroma to entice the sailors as another incentive to their services amazing amazing chef and there's all kinds of stories that are not as clean as sam's interpretation there but that is awesome buddy okay so Billy has all this incorporated now, so some what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a whisk and bring all that together, right? Yeah. So in the bowl he has the eggs, the breadcrumbs, the garlic powder, uh, the milk, and the panko breadcrumbs as well. And what he's gonna do with a whisk, he's just gonna bring it together. And again, that's just so the liquid is absorbed into the breadcrumb. Whisking ability of a king. Look at him go. Okay, so you can see, is it better? 
what do you mean? It looking better than this morning? So, so the one thing that when I was very quietly coaching him on how to create the veal meatballs is I realized that he didn't uh, mix all the ingredients completely through. So you gotta really make sure that when you're incorporating this into it, nope, that, that you put in at the end, okay? So what I did notice that in the end, uh, that we had to remix it a little bit, but it was fine, okay? So at this point, what Billy's gonna do is he's going to incorporate uh, that panad, the breadcrumb mixture. He's gonna incorporate right into his meal, and he's gonna get a nice pair of gloves on here. <laughs> and he's having some difficulty with the whisk. There you go, so gloves. So that what he's gonna do now is he's gonna very thoroughly mix the panad into uh, the veal meatball recipe, okay? What he's also gonna do at that point is he's going to season it. Again, we talk about layering flavor. So in the recipe, it already details how much salt and how much pepper. Uh, but what we tend to do as well, and he did it this morning, why don't you tell everybody what you had to do uh, after we made the meatballs? On the oven, um, made a little. Oh yeah, you make a little one to test the for the seasoning. For the seasoning. So what he did is he made a very little meatball or hamburger, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, cooked the patty in the pan just to check for seasoning because again, it could be uh, your own personal preference. You might think it needs a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper. Uh, really up to you. But but uh, at this point, I think when we tested it this morning based on the recipe, and we're breaking a lot of these recipes down from much larger recipes that I use in the operation. So we, we, uh, we tend to, to check them before, but we broke it down and we tasted it and I thought it tasted perfect, okay? So what he's gonna do, you can incorporate the panada now and because he has gloves on, he can use his hand to get everything out of the bowl, right? And he's gonna use his hands and this is the fun part, right? Yeah, sure. We used to call these bad boys. Okay, so when Billy was younger, I was like, son, you want to make bad boys? These were bad boys, because we'd make monstrous meatballs that maybe you'd eat one, maybe you'd eat two, but uh, you'd incorporate it all together, okay? So he's going to mix that all in. I'm going to bring over his salt and pepper. So his salt and pepper, and he has his measuring spoons organized for the salt and pepper, and then he's just going to incorporate that in as well, okay? Uh, as soon as... Uh, I feel that the onions and the garlic and thyme and all that is cold enough. We're going to incorporate that as well. Okay, don't drop the veal meatballs on the floor, please. That would be terrible. Yeah, that, wouldn't be good. that wouldn't be good. Okay, he's getting enough on the table, but on the floor, I think we're good. I'm going to clean up a little bit here, son, and get rid of some of your mess. Yeah, which doesn't happen very often, but I will get rid of that. Okay. I'm going to set up for him as well uh, a tray that we've lined with parchment paper. And that's so when he is uh, portioning, he has a portion scale here. You don't need a portion scale. If you choose to use a scoop, you can use that. But we're going to scale them out at three ounces. And what I've done as well is I have two other sizes that we had made this morning just for different, uh, for different uses. So I have a monstrous four ounce meatball. These ones are three ounce. We're also, we also made a one ounce so that we could do for an hors d'oeuvre party or something like that so you can see what sizes those are, okay? So I'm just gonna go back to the stove and grab the onions and the garlic. And I'm also going to put my pot of water on the stove. And I'll talk to you a little bit about the pot of water uh, and the reason why we have to add enough salt to the pot for our pasta, okay? <coughs> so onions and shallots are nice and cold now. They have enough salt, so I, I know they're gonna be perfect in the veal meatball dish. I'm gonna bring these over. I have uh, water on the stove, so the pasta I'm using. Again, the people at Queen's Pasta, they're gonna kill me for saying this, because um, the pasta company that I worked for, Via, was a fresh pasta company, okay? So a lot of great Italian dishes, and they do an unbelievable job. Um, this particular dish we're using dry pasta. When I talked to Giovanni about um, fresh versus dry, and I was trying to get some reasoning behind uh, in every Italian household, do they make pasta fresh every day and stuff like that? He said no, and this could be very different from your own family, but he said no, that typically they use dry pasta at home 
but fresh was on special occasions. So it was a very much a family get together. Everybody would get together, create pasta dishes, and it would become a whole family encompassing role in terms of creating the dish. But I, for certain dishes, I, I prefer dry pasta only because it's lighter. Uh, fresh pasta is very heavy and it's delicious, but it tends to be a little bit heavier a dish, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the water on. Actually, I'm gonna put it in the back. I just moved it to the front so you could see it. At this point, I'm gonna put it on low to medium heat. I might turn it up a little bit later. Uh, you always want about four times the volume of water to the pasta you're cooking. Okay, and the reason that is it's going to make it easier so that it doesn't stick together. Uh, you want your water to always be boiling. You don't want to cook pasta in water that's not boiling. And you want to make sure, and this is what I was told by Giovanni as well, that the salinity of the water should be reminding you of the sea or the ocean. Okay, and the reason that is, is it's a lot easier for us to flavor a dish at the end with little salt versus to have to bring it up so many levels. If my pasta already tastes great, and if my sauce already tastes great, then finishing should be very subtle, okay? So I'm gonna put enough salt in there, and it looks like a lot, but believe me, it makes a difference. And uh, I'm gonna taste the water, actually, to make sure that it has the salinity of the ocean, and I'm gonna get that going in the back here, okay? Perfect. So I'll bring this back over to Billy, and if it's hot, you'll know because he'll scream, and if it's not hot, then he won't scream. So what I'm gonna do, oil, everything, okay? The oil, olive oil is flavored. The garlic and shallots have great flavor. I'm just gonna add this in here. And at the same time, Billy's gonna add his parsley, his salt and pepper, and we're gonna finish that, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a little pan over there, and what I'll have him do uh, after he produces the meatball uh, recipe, he will go over and test it for us, and then we'll taste it together and make sure it's right. So you can mix those right together, Billy, yep. completely. He's gonna measure out his seasoning and he's gonna start portioning over here. Yep, and start uh, portioning as well, right? Okay. Billy's love for cooking is scary a little bit, so I've already told him there is no way he's going into this industry. I need him to hurry up and become a lawyer or a doctor so I can retire. What you guys probably don't know is that Billy is the one that's been responsible for all the editing of the videos we're doing. So he's done a, an amazing job on his own time being here at home, and uh, he's been completely involved through the whole process. Okay, so he's always the guy behind the camera taping so that you guys can see everything. Okay? I dirtied up the grinder. You dirtied up what? I got I got meat on it. Oh, okay, no problem. Okay, so you're gonna mix that up, oh. and you're gonna make one meatball so that everybody sees, and you're gonna continue, okay? And I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in here, Billy, so, you can, so you'll be ready. Sam said that was the best advice ever. What was that? What was the best advice? I assume to be a doctor. No. Really. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, so Billy is scrambling here. Clean your station, right, Sam? Make sure you're always working clean. That's the best advice I can give It doesn't tend to work that well at all. Okay? So Billy, I'm just gonna shove you down a little bit here. You're gonna make that meatball and you're gonna test it, and then uh, you're gonna come back and start creating, okay? We're gonna talk a little bit about the next uh, part of the dish. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna eliminate the board now. What we're gonna do is start preparing for arabiata, okay? Oh, sorry, not arabiata, aliolio. The reason I was thinking arabiata is because of the ingredients, okay? So I've, uh, the choice I made today pasta-wise is dicheco, mainly because I found it in the grocery store. I've used it before, it holds a good bite. Uh, it's an imported Italian pasta, at least it was when I was using it years ago. Uh, I mentioned in the recipe for aliolio uh, that you could use a white wine to deglaze. I'm choosing to because the addition of alcohol is always a good thing in my opinion. Uh, it's garlic, okay, some Italian parsley, some really good quality olive oil, and again, not so necessary all the time, but I've chose to add a little bit of chili, I think it'll be great, and uh, some uh, kosher salt, and some cracked black pepper, okay? 
So I'm just going to move all these ingredients over to the side very carefully. Sorry, Sam, watch your back. Yeah. Okay. Jason says, hey, big brother. Hey, Jay, what's up, buddy? We're making some ali olio pasta today and puttanesca. So you should ask Sam about his description of puttanesca sauce off the hook. Uh, what we did today, I was talking to you guys, and I'm going to turn the oven down a little bit. Uh, because these meatballs have been pre prepared in advance. But I'm going to set up the oven. I usually do about 375. I'm going to turn it down now because I'm just bringing these meatballs back up to temp so that I can show you adding to the tomato sauce. In the back here, I have some tomato sauce, uh, some Nona tomato sauce rolling. And again, the recipe is online for that. And I'm just going to show you the meatballs in the different sizes. Part of my back. So these, again, are the three ounce size. So these are typically what I'd serve in a pasta dish, okay? I don't want them too small because I feel they get lost. And for somebody that wants a veal meatball dish, I feel they want to see the meatball, okay? So that's what we're going to be using. I'm going to put those in. They've been cooked about halfway. So now I'm going to put them back in just to heat them up. And then we're going to add them right into our sauce. And that sauce, traditionally, I would simmer for about half an hour and uh, 45 minutes and allow that really to permeate through the tomato sauce. You'll get a great flavor of the veal. And then I have the other one, sorry, part of my back. So these are the one ounces. So these are little guys that I'm just gonna reheat in the oven and then add them to the tomato sauce as well. So hors d'oeuvre parties, uh, using as little, and these would be a little bit small for a slider, but very petite slider, like one bites, uh, little tiny veal uh, mozzarella sandwiches and stuff like that, okay? So that'll go in the oven as well. Okay. So again, we talked about the tomato sauce in the back. Billy's gonna start producing his meatball here, and away we go, okay? So as soon as you do that, son, you can bring it back over and we'll taste it. Okay. Okay, guys. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about puttanesca. Okay, so Sam's already given us the gory details on uh, the name and, and what it means, and it's kind of really neat that everything in Italy has a story behind it and how it was produced. And food has become that, right? Like you think about a lot of uh, food in cuisine and it talks about what they did at home or stories about the, the cuisine itself. Names of the dishes are named after people. So food has a great history. So again, I'm gonna organize stuff for the puttanesca. So, puttanesca sauce, here we go. Uh, olives, necessity, so I've just taken some Kalamata olives and split them in half, they're pitted obviously. Some onion, some garlic, and how we talked about uh, flavoring the garlic and cooking it a little bit longer so that it has that golden tinge and it's more pungent, uh, this is when I'll do that. So in this puttanesca sauce, I'm gonna slightly brown the garlic, okay? Some Italian parsley, some capers, I did mention on the recipe, these are brined, but salted capers are preferred. Uh, salted capers are phenomenal, they give great flavor. Again, an essential ingredient is uh, anchovy. So these are just small anchovies that we're gonna mash, uh, we're gonna uh, mash down in the pan. So I'm gonna leave it whole until we get to the pan. Some San Marzano tomatoes, yes they are San Marzano tomatoes. So it's just a canned product that kept the liquid Cut it a little bit smaller. The brandy that we talked about. So brandy just giving it a little bit more of a bite or a kick. I am gonna put chilies in this dish as well. And some really great granite padano, or sorry, uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. You can see this is so well aged that you can see the salt crystals. Let me just bring that closer to the camera. You can see the salt crystals in the cheese itself. So it's a really high end uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. And uh, obviously right now with everything going on in the world and importing product, everything gets more expensive. So this was almost $40 a kilo when we bought it, okay? So how long are we going on the meatballs over there, sir? Are you close? I think. You think? Okay. So you come back over and produce this, and I'm going to start on the pasta, okay? I'll bring that over and we can taste it together when it's time. You start producing meatballs. Okay, so we're back here. So yeah, we had a long way to go. <laughs> so again, we're just gonna turn it to low heat. We're just doing that little meatball so we can taste and just make sure the seasoning is what it should be, okay? 
I'm going to turn up my pasta water a little bit in the back there. And really, it's, it's the timing today because I'm doing two or three dishes. So we're going to make sure that the timing is ready, uh, that everything's done virtually at the same time so that we can plate together, okay? Turn that down just a little bit. On my hamburger recipe, I say you never press a hamburger. It'll release the juices. So try not to press it down, even though I'm in a hurry to make sure this cooks. But that's it, okay? Really good. Internal temperatures when you're eating something like this. I know at home, a lot of people and I would eat a hamburger at home medium, no problem. But I know they talk about uh, internals for uh, ground proteins being about 185, which is extremely well done. I would, probably wouldn't cook it that much, uh, probably about 175, but these are gonna be simmering in the tomato sauce, so they're gonna be good, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that off the heat, allow it to cool a little bit. Can you just move those ones there, Sean, for you? Uh, knife for that? Just so they move that down. Thank you. And I'm just gonna put this on the burner, okay? Okay. So time being spent now, I'm going to bring those meatballs out of the oven. Yes, they, they haven't been in there very long, but I just wanted to show you uh, that now we're going to put them in the tomato sauce. The reason we are cooking them a little bit in advance is to allow the protein to come together. If I just put everything in there raw, what would tend to happen is they might uh, come apart or they'll stick together. So this just prevents all that from happening, okay? So again, I'm going to take these out. Now, because we were making a double recipe today, let me just organize this here. Because we were organizing a double recipe, we made a full batch of tomato sauce, okay? So all I'm gonna do is just take those meatballs and just drop them right into my tomato sauce. And I'll show you that once I get them all in there. Okay? So these guys here were the three ounce. These guys are the four ounce. So you can see there's a little bit of a difference between them. And I'm going to leave a couple of the four ounce behind just so that I can show you that puttanesca sauce. That's what we're going to use those for. Jason said you just answered the question I was going to ask. What was it? What was the question? Maybe I was wrong. Ask it again. Ask Lisa if I'm making these properly. Okay, so I'm gonna add a couple of these and just keep those to the side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure so you can see the meatballs are really, really uh, incorporating into the sauce here, okay? So they're gonna really uh, saturate the sauce. They're gonna give some great flavor to the sauce as well. And then it's gonna be right to the, on top of the pasta, okay? I'm gonna add a couple more of the large ones. Maybe two or three, just because I have space. And then the small ones. Well, he said the meatballs in the sauce raw. You put them in raw again. What was that, sorry? The meatballs in the sauce raw. Oh, it raw, oh, I see, okay. You say you're the chef. <laughs> so these ones, again, are the small ones, the little guys that I made that I would probably use for an hors d'oeuvre function. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put them all in at the same time now, okay? So I'll just get rid of this. Okay, so Billy's getting close back there. You got them all done, son? He does all the cooking. He does all the cooking at home, Billy. Okay, there we go. So that's good to go. So all I'm gonna do is put those meatballs to the back and allow them to continue simmering. And we can start producing the uh, aglio okay? So right now the sauce itself takes seconds. It doesn't take very long. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on a medium to low pan. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some good quality olive oil. Okay? At this time, we talked about doing half a box of pasta at this point. So I'm going to wait till my water is boiling in the back. And then I'm going to put the pasta in all at once. Okay? So I'm going to take half the volume. I don't know if the cameraman can get back on the pasta pot at the back there. 
Oh my. Can you get there? Yeah. So you can see that the pasta water is almost there, very, very close. So when you see the bubbles to start coming up, that's generally when you know it's there. But I want a good rolling boil. So we're pretty much there. Good. So I'm going to start by adding my pasta, okay? Rolling boil, we're there, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my pasta. Spaghettini, I've, I've uh, made the choice. Can be a spaghetti, can be a penne, whatever you guys like. I'm going to push those down a little bit. And now I'm going to allow that pasta to uh, come to soften a little bit. And then I'm going to make sure it goes down inside the dish itself, OK? So here for this dish, I'm not going to start with too high heat. Again, I'm going to start with some good quality olive oil. And this is an olive oil sauce, so I anticipated having a little bit more oil in it than a regular sauce. So again, with the pasta, what I'm going to do is as it starts to soften, I'm just going to push it down into the water, okay? So aglio olio. So again, I'm going to get a good amount of garlic. Okay. And you're going to see that it's going to start to simmer here, start to sweat. Okay, there you go. Just going to start to sweat off that garlic in here. And again, at this point, I don't want any color. A little bit of chili. I'm getting some spatter. And that's just because of the water in the garlic. There's probably a little bit of water in there. Okay, I'm just going to do that. And I'm just going to deglaze with a little bit of white wine, okay? At this point, this is where we're going to stop, okay? I'm going to reduce that white wine down to half. And my pasta now is going to be submerged in the water. And I'm just going to add a little bit of oil to the pasta just to prevent it from sticking together, okay? So a little bit of oil in the pasta water, just to prevent it from sticking together. Okay, just there. And I'm going to definitely move it around a little bit, just to make sure that the pasta noodles are uh, suspended alone and they're not sticking together. So I'm just going to use that a little bit. And what you're going to see when I strain it, is I'm going to retain some of the liquid from the pasta water when I strain it, uh, because I'm going to use that as well in the sauce. Okay. Let me just turn down my pasta water there. I want it boiling, but I don't want it boiling over. Okay, so you can see now that all the noodles are separated. There's good salt in the water. Uh, these will take, generally with a dry pasta, I would say for al dente, if it says five to eight minutes on a box, I would go somewhere in between, probably six minutes, okay? And this pasta, because we're not cooking it in advance, is going to go right into the sauce, okay? Jason's asking, do you notice a difference in fresh chopped garlic compared to bottled chopped garlic in oil? Will it make a difference in taste? Uh, good question, Jay. We were talking a little bit about that earlier. Uh, definitely, if you can go fresh, always go fresh. I know it's a little bit more work, but the end result is far better. Uh, there are a lot of convenience products on the market, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're the right product to use, right? So where you can use fresh, if you have to use 
uh, bottled product pre-chopped, then go ahead. But uh, ideally, always fresh. Okay. So a lot of um, reasoning behind and ways why you can tell the pasta is cooked properly. Throw the pasta on the wall and sticks. Uh, that's probably one that I wouldn't choose unless you want to be cleaning your walls all afternoon, right? So I could see that this just because of the way the pasta is itself that it's not there. But one way that we check in the industry, when we bite in the center, and this is a very fine noodle, so it's a little bit more difficult. When we're cooking in advance, we want to see a little bit of a white line there uh, so that we can uh, allow it to cool and it's still going to have a bite. And then when we reheat in the sauce, it's still al dente. And al dente is a very fancy word for having a bite, okay? But uh, in terms of uh, cooking right into the dish, I'm gonna bring it right until the point where I'm gonna eat it because I'm gonna be serving this dish immediately, okay? So we're very close, like it won't take very long to cook. What I'm gonna do now is start bringing over my uh, ingredients for my uh, meatballs and so that we can plate the first dish and then we'll make the puttanesca together, okay? So Billy, if you wanna get rid of some of the clutter there, for now, just put it on the back table. We're gonna get this. All we'll need is we're gonna get rid of the fresh thyme here and some of our drinks. Okay. Salt and pepper we're gonna need after. And you can get rid of the knife and the rolls and all that stuff as well. Okay. Okay. So in terms of that pasta, guaranteed it's there now. So I'm gonna check it again, take one out. Still has a little bit of a white line, which is what I'm looking for, because I'm gonna to continue to cook this in the sauce. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna strain the pasta, okay? So I'm gonna turn off my back element there. We're gonna come over here and I'm gonna strain the pasta. And you can see how I'm keeping some of the water, okay? So in terms of here, now I'm just gonna strain the pasta itself. And I'm keeping some of that pasta water. And here's the reason why. So we're gonna create the sauce now. I'm gonna use a little bit of that salinity from the pasta water, and I'm gonna flavor that. Instead of using a stock, I can just use the pasta water itself. Okay. So we're bringing that to a simmer. Simmer the pasta itself. Again, very al dente right now. We're going to continue to cook in that sauce. You want to come over and just try to organize that a little bit? Thank you. Okay. I'm going to make sure that I'm folding this in getting all the sauce to coat the entire pasta. Okay. I'm gonna add, sorry, a little bit of parsley. Italian parsley here. Again, some olive oil. Because it's an olive oil sauce, I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil at the end. And now is the point I'm going to taste it for salt and pepper, okay? Okay, so everything's incorporated there. I'm going to taste one piece here. Salt, a little bit of salt. The heat from those, now I've used bird chilies today, Thai birds, they have quite a bit of heat. I talked to you on the recipe about using finger chilies, only because Thai birds sometimes are a little bit extreme for some people, but if you like heat and good heat, for me, Thai birds the way to go. Okay, so that's great. So that's ready to go now. I'm just gonna bring this over and I'm gonna plate the pasta first, okay?
So I'm just going to move this out of the way. Okay. So in terms of the meatball we were talking about, okay. So Billy and I produced this little tiny hamburger. And only because we tasted it today, I'm sure that the seasoning was good, and it is, it's actually perfect. Okay. Billy at this point has his meatballs organized and he's weighed out everything in three ounce portions. Then when he's done, it's a good culinary trick. Put a little bit of oil on the gloves, like canola oil, and that'll allow you to really form the meatballs themselves. What I advise at this stage, and I'm gonna have your son to go to the side and just prepare the rest. Uh, at this stage, what you're gonna do is he's gonna squeeze the meatballs together to eliminate any air. And then very gently, you're gonna find that the meatballs are very uh, soft and a little bit difficult to work with, but that's a good thing. That means that the end result is gonna be very tender and delicious, okay? So you're gonna produce these, okay? Yeah. So in terms of what we're gonna do here, we're gonna plate the pasta itself and then we'll make the puttanesca. So vessel of your choice, obviously, is I've chosen a nice large pasta bowl here, and I'm gonna just grab some tongs. And the, tong the uh, pasta itself, we're just going to swirl into the bowl. So I'm not gonna put sauce throughout this pasta. I'm just gonna get a good portion of pasta, and this is probably good for about three people. You can use a fork. I mean, in the industry, we use uh, a fork and twist it. For us, we're just going to twist it up in the center of the bowl here. Okay. Pardon my fingers, but we know it happens. Okay, like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort through here and get three really great meatballs. Okay, so maybe a little bit of the sauce first, just coating the top of that pasta. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to get three of the beautiful meatballs. So Billy, after I plate this, I'll just get you to move things over so I can make the puttanesca. Yeah. Okay. Just like that. And then what we're going to do is cheese. So I'm just going to grab some of the cheese. Okay, so this is the fresh Parmigiano Reggiano. Using a microplane, lots of cheese. And then maybe I'll garnish it with some micro seedlings or these are just pea tendrils. Okay, so that's the veal meatball dish. I don't know if you're getting that. Back up a bit. Good, okay, great. So I'm just gonna move this to the back and then I'll do the puttanesca for everybody, okay? So I'm going to use my chilies, my salt and pepper, and I do not need my white wine here. Putanesca. So I'm just going to grab my pan down here. Okay, so for our puttanesca, we're going to do this quickly. We're just going to use a little bit of olive oil. Okay. And the difference here again is I'm going to brown the garlic a little bit, okay? So white onion. color the onion you're just going to allow some of the garlic to brown so at this point I'm going to add a little bit of garlic right at the beginning okay so as opposed to adding it in stages I'm going to add it right at the beginning with the olive oil we 
talked a little bit about the Thai bird chilies. Wait for that to start sweating here. There we go. So Thai bird chilies, we're going to add a little bit. And again, it packs quite a punch, so you just need a little bit. And here, instead of the wine, what we're going to do is we're going to deglaze with brandy, okay? I'm going to add my olives. One anchovy will be more than enough. So I'm going to add one anchovy. And with the anchovy, I'm just going to mash it down in the pan a little bit, okay? So with that anchovy, I'm just going to mash it, okay, just to allow that, some of that flavor to come out. Some capers. See that the garlic is starting to turn golden. Okay, and some brandy. So you got to be very careful working with an open flame and brandy. It can flame up. So I'm just going to add a touch of brandy. Stand back in case it flames, and that's just burning off the alcohol. When I get my uh, garlic to the point that I want it, so that it's toasted a little bit, then I'm going to add some of my tomatoes. And these are just the San Marzano and the, the sauce itself, okay? Just the juice from the can. I'm going to add in now our Meatballs that we prepared earlier, these are the larger ones that I was talking about. Italian parsley. Some salt and pepper. And it's really the tomatoes that will break down that will create this dish, okay? Again, nothing wrong with adding some of the juice from those tomatoes. Okay. Sam is asking why brandy instead of maybe grappa or Italian vermouth? You know what, either choice, Sam, would be fantastic. I just uh, have done it a number of different ways, like we've used wine. I think grappa would be an amazing choice, actually. Uh, but for me, I just liked the flavor of the brandy with everything. It just worked, so I kept it. Not traditional Italian, obviously, but grappa, I think, would be a great choice. There's a lot going on in this dish. It's very robust. There's a lot of flavor. So I wanted something that would you'd feel a little bit and you, you could taste it. But the brandy, for whatever reason, it just made a lot of sense and it did work. Okay. So what we're going to do at this point, we're going to allow the meatballs to simmer. You can cover it if you want to. Allow the sauce to come down a little bit. Again, this with the spaghetti as well would be an incredible dish. Okay. But this is just a variation where we're going to do an appetizer. So you can see how the sauce is starting to come together now. So it's all really coming together. The olive oil is cooking. Some of the meats come out of the meatballs. The capers, anchovies there, garlic. I'm going to taste it just for flavor. It's going to be extremely hot, obviously. And I'm not an alcohol guy. I don't enjoy any alcohol. The brandy in this really, really works. Okay. So now we're going to go to the plate with these meatballs. Can you just move those meatballs out of the way for me, son, the big one? Hmm? This one out of the way here? Yeah. Thank you. Just take the whole pot. Yeah, perfect. So now we're going to plate this dish, okay? 
So again, choice of vessel, it really doesn't matter, it's up to you guys. I've chosen a plate for this particular dish. What I'm going to do first is just line up the three meatballs. And I'm going to put two in line here, and then I'm going to put a third one just slightly offset. Okay. I'm going to take some of those beautiful tomatoes and the sauce here and just spill them over top. I don't know if you guys are, like if you love capers and uh, olives and that sort of thing, I absolutely love it, okay? Just gonna shave it again, some beautiful uh, Parmigiano Reggiano down on the meatballs. I made a, a unique garnish, actually not for the old school guys, but uh, a unique garnish for this one, I'll bring it over. I just fried, do you remember this Sam, some fried basil leaves? So I just took some fried uh, basil leaves and just fried them, just for a little bit of variation and it can add some complexity to the dish, make it a little bit sexier. Did I say sexier? Yes, it makes it sexier. And then like I said, I'm just going to get some of those beautiful pea tendrils again. And some olive oil if you want to grab me the olive oil stuff. And again, some good uh, Italian olive oil that I'll drizzle on this plate. Okay. And that's your dish, everybody. Okay, so two variations of the veal meatballs. Two variations of the veal meatballs. We did uh, one with a puttanesca sauce as an appetizer, delicious, nice variation. Or we simmered them in the tomato sauce and did them with pasta di olio, I hope everybody enjoyed it. Join us next week. We're gonna cook salmon perfectly and we're gonna serve it with a mango relish, Israeli couscous and fresh asparagus. Again, guys, any questions, you can always check our YouTube channel and look for some of the recipes or please join us uh, whenever our videos are here for you guys to enjoy, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you from Billy and Billy. Billy and Billy, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you, guys.